a great decision. Do you find cooperation now between the Pentagon and CIA closer now than ever since retired General David Petraeus is now heading up the command, an old colleague of yours? Yeah, well, most of he's, well, he's actually a West Point classmate. He grew up in Cornwall, New York. I grew up in Greenwood Lake, New York. My wife grew up in Monroe, New York. So, you know, we were all kind of high school uh, peers, at least Dave and I were. And, uh, and by the way, the guy that's currently running the National Security Agency and Cyber Command, Keith Alexander, is a West Point classmate. So we really do have a great, you know, it's a friendship. And by the way, I, I, I really do believe that the way we get through these really complex problems confronting us is to first and foremost build relationships. And on the basis of having a relationship of trust, you know, then you can, you can wrestle around with them. But I will also tell you, my current boss, you know, Secretary Panetta, is remarkable. I mean, in terms of relationships, he is a remarkable man to work for. And of course, he had been at the CIA before that. So the, the relationship among DOD, CIA, Department of Homeland Security, and FBI, notably, is, is remarkable. The U.S. military is one of the main fabrics of the nation, has played a crucial role in daily life of our citizens since the time of President George Washington. Why does the military remain such an important anchor in the nation, in your opinion? Well, Washington was before my time. I'm not sure. I <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I've, often, I've often said that the, uh, the nation's power and prestige is based on the aggregate of three things. And one is military power, the other is economic power, and the third is diplomatic power. So the ability to persuade, to build coalitions, the ability to apply resources and have the economic standing to do so. And then having a military that can actually um, uh, you know, provide options. You don't want to become a military that can only do one or two or three things. I mean, one of the things that marks us as a military is that if you can think of something you need done and you want to use the military. It doesn't mean you always should, but if you can think of something you want to use the military for, we can probably figure it out. I mean, our great strength is our organization. You know, it's extraordinarily predictable. We have the finest planners in the world. We have the finest communications architectures, the finest logistical architectures in the world. I mean, bar none. And so, you know, I do think, I, I don't, like to talk about the military as a an isolated instrument of power because it doesn't exist that way. It's got to be it's got to be complementary to the other two uh, instruments.